So uh, in today's uh, edition, I'm going to talk about um, the voice of children as the main voice in literature and uh, how on the whole, although not exclusively, uh, I feel this doesn't work. So um, by way of that argument, I'm going to talk about Emma Donoghue's Room, uh, which was Booker shortlisted. Uh, and when I read it, uh, I enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was a good a good book, well written. And then when I finished it, I started thinking about it and I thought, but there was one thing that really annoyed me and that was the voice of the five-year-old child who basically narrates the book, or at least the first half of the book. And the problem is when you have someone that young, uh, their language uh, and their conception abilities are not literary or cannot tra be transported into a literary form because it's above their level. Now, there's an argument in the book that um, conceptually, the conceptions are provided for this child by his mother, because basically, if you don't know the story, they've been kidnapped and the child was actually born in, um, in captivity. And in order to protect him and, and his psyche, the mother sort of creates this sort of fantastical world of play and, and, and things. So um, the argue, yeah, you can argue that conceptually the child thinks like that because it's been provided by his mother, by an adult. So it, it, it's legitimate for it to be above his actual age level of five, but the language isn't. Um, the language reads older, even though the authors worked very hard to sort of infantilize it and I think I think the problem I had by the end of the book is I realized that um, I could see and hear the author the adult author trying to imagine and write the voice and conception of a child and it just it that came across too artificial for me it didn't feel natural it didn't feel authentic um, and I feel that's always going to be the problem when you have a, a, a protagonist in literature who's that young um, and interestingly, I think that's revealed by the second half of the book when they're free and the emphasis shifts from the child to the mother. And it, that just seemed to me to underline that the author really was wanted to was much more comfortable in writing the adult point of view. And, and why wouldn't you be, obviously? And I think she sort of betrays herself by doing that showing that the, the the artifice of the first half. It's still a book I would recommend you read. You know, I'm not saying don't read this, but it did make me think of the wider issues of children in, lit, you know, sort of narrating literary books. Um, but then there's a book like Mark Haddon's The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, uh, which I do own, but I can't hold up in front of the camera because I lent it to my own son and, uh, well... He's read it, but I'll never get it back, um, which sort of seems appropriate to this uh, edition on children. Anyway, uh, now that works, I think, even though it's a young narrator, because the narrator's voice is so fractured by his Asperger's and his strange way of perceiving the world. Um, it's so alien to the reader uh, that it works. But then you come back to, to room and sort of say, well, that's very alien, being sort of, you know, born into captivity. And, and that's true. But with Haddon, it's so sort of off kilter. The language of an of of how someone with Asperger's or autism or whatever sees the world is already so far removed from a, you know our conception. Then I think it, I think Haddon pulls it off brilliantly, and it's it's all it's believable. Is it authentic? I don't know. You know, is it how someone with that is it how someone with Asperger's sees and, and speaks and, and and conceives? I don't know. But it 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 resonated with me as authentic in a way that room didn't so i think i think uh apart from its moral uplift which is you know you just want it when you finish the end of the book and you just go yeah he conquered it um so i think Haddon pulls it off uh so it can be done uh and then the third book i want to talk to is about uh it's called how the soldier repairs the gramophone by a bosnian author called uh sasha stan uh, forgive my pronunciation sasha stanisic um Basically, this kid uh, grows up in, uh, he's a Serb growing up in Bosnia, just as the war's about to break out. And um, what's, I think this works because the way the child conceives and associates things that aren't actually things that ought to be brought together as, as having something in common, but to his childlike mind, this does. And it's... <laughs> It's a different sort of creative imagination to the, the child in room. 
And I think the reason this works is because I believe this is much more autobiographical than Room. Room is a completely artificial construction out of the author's mind. And there's, you know, there should be no criticism of that. You know, that's what authors should be doing. But I think this reads more authentic because I sense that these crazy sort of thought associations that the kid in this makes were ones that the author made in that situation. And in the sense you have the terrible situation of the kid born into captivity of Room. Here the terrible situation is of that horrendous civil war that was in Bosnia. The author became an exile, went to Germany, um, and he wrote the book in Germany. And as I say, I believe this, uh, even though it's fiction, I believe it came from a much more personal space inside the writer than sadly this one, which is reads as sort of an intellectual thing of, OK, if I had this situation of a kid in captivity who's never seen the outside world, what would the, what would the world look like to him? Um, which I think she did a great job of conceiving, but it just left me not believing it. Whereas uh, this and uh, Mark Haddon... Um, I I did. I mean, I believe both of them. And uh, just off the top of my head, the other uh, examples of uh, child narrators in fiction, uh, two books by William Faulkner, As I Lay Dying and uh, The Sound and the Fury. Um, they are fragmented narratives with fragmented voices. And so the child's sort of fragmentation of their voice fits in perfectly. And in a way somehow questions of authenticity are, are less relevant in those because of the context in which these voices are only one of several speaking and um, I would highly recommend both of those. So you can have child voices uh, in fiction that work um, but one of the things is if they're not straight down the line such as with someone with Asperger's or the two that Faulkner uses um, but it's hard, it's very hard to pull off and I think uh, readers picking up books narrated by literary books narrated by children uh, the author run the risk of they're just not going to convince us some do but some don't okay that's all for today